What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Movie Court. It's the only podcast you need for your movie news, movie reviews, and more episode. Movie what? Just moving on. Move, movie corks. Yep, we're moving on. <laughs> moving on. We keep we're rolling on auto. Nah, we've rebranded. Yep, Autobots assemble. Uh, we've got a big episode. <laughs> 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 moving on now, Autobots assemble. Yep. <laughs> so throw it all together. Throw it all together. We've got oh, a big shit. lineup for you this week. Obviously, we've got the, the brand new Transformers number. Well, I was going to say number one, but it's Transformers 1, which is the prequel to show you Optimus Prime and Megatron buddies no longer. Which, yeah, yep. I'll, get into, I'll get into that. Then we've got Netflix's newest one, which has an all-star lineup, which is nobody wanted this. Very, very interesting name, but everybody does want this. Not every nobody. And then we've got another big name, which is Will Ferrell and his friend Harper are traveling across America, yep. which is dealing with a interesting topic. So we'll get into yep. those ones. You could say that... Uh... We're all that we're going all the way from transformers to transgenders. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even think of that. There you go. That's, there a, that's, you that's go. my rhyme and joke for the day. Mm, that's too sophisticated for me. <laughs> but yeah, you know. Let's get into movie news. Dane Maggie Smith has died at age eighty nine. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's a little bit sad. That was um, yeah, sad, sad, but. To pick up spirits, we've got Angelina Jolie, is a world class opera singer in a teaser for uh, Pablo Larina's Maria. I have no idea whether I feel like it's an opera singer. I don't know who that is. Is that Angelina Jolie's like cousin or something? No, she's playing an opera singer. Yeah, but her name's not Jolie. Is it not? <laughs> <laughs> Why is it not? Is it Jolie! Out? Jolie! <laughs> yeah, so. Sure thing. Oh, uh-huh. All right. All right. And then we've got Mike faced to star with Florence Book in East of Eden adaptation, which is a Netflix special or limited series that's been green littered. So pretty, pretty cool. I know nothing about it. You're on a fucking roll today. <laughs> yeah. I was on the roof yesterday. Cleaning gutters. On the roof. Cleaning yeah. gutters, right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So it changes my mood. Yep. Uh, well, we've got... <laughs> we've got... Bro, this is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> we got Anna de Armas, who is also in a movie coming up with Sydney Sweeney, which is going to pull a very heavy male audience, which is going to be like, hey, to their significant other, do you want to come see this movie with me? Because her and Anna, so Sydney Sweeney and Anna, uh, doing a Wild Things scene, which is there's a threesome in it, and everyone's been talking about it, and there's so many memes of the guy having looking like he's very very happy with the casting choice. But anyway, that's not what we're here. She's actually starring in the um, John Wick spinoff movie. So she is going oh, to right. be take, taking the lead as a kick-ass Cuban assassin. There you go. Mm. What was the movie we watched where she was also a spy? What was that the... Ghost. That was with... Uh, oh, America. yeah. Ghosted. Yeah, which they didn't do that well, though. They didn't do that well. She wasn't, like, she didn't do bad at the action stuff. The movie was just garbage. Mm. Yeah, sure. Oh, well. So, yeah. Kind of cool. They're doing a, a, a female John Wick. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. We're going to watch yeah. it regardless. So, yeah. And then we got Anna Kenswick, Woman of the Hour. How do you know you've chosen a safe person? So, boom, 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 which is a new movie. It looks very 70 esque. Whoa. Do you mean Anna Kendrick from Kitch Perfect? Yeah, I do. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That was a genuine question that time. That wasn't a correction. No, yeah, probably needed it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, funny. And we've got Paddington in Peru, which is coming up very, very soon. I love Paddington. You be keen. Yeah. Yep. You love your Paddington. Paddington's sick. I've actually got the original Paddington, which. Paddington's my, sick. Yeah. My parents bought me. It's got the original tag, and then I'll pass it to my kids. So it might be an heirloom soon. Cute. Ooh. Uh, we got Gladiator 2 trailer which looks actually looks really, really cool. 
So we've yeah, it looks got, sick. We've got Real him un- unleashing the rage. It looks cool. We got yep. Sinners is a new trailer, which has Michael B. Jordan is battling evil. So okay, be interesting. He is has he making a- it too? Um, I don't know about that, but I'm he has impressed me a lot. Um, I don't think he is. No, no. Ryan Coogler is. Yeah. But okay, I don't, okay, we'll see. Look, I I think he's been very impressive, so I'm keen to see it. We've got Moana two. We'll cast the Disney hero as a master voyage. So they're going on a big voyage. <laughs> oh, I was I was waiting for you to like comment on Moana, but no. Oh, we don't give a shit about Moana. Okay, okay. I don't, I don't, I don't love. I've seen it a few times, especially at school, because fucking teachers are lazy and always set the same movies. Uh, yeah, it's fine. It's a three. I don't give a shit about a sequel. Okay, but we'll yeah. watch it. Okay. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing to say. I haven't already said. I think I said this last week when you mentioned it. Yeah, well, yeah, it's, it's sailing <laughs> just the, off. Just the pause. And then we've oh, got our newest, we've got already advertising for Christmas movies, which is Red One, which is starring The Rock as a Christmas elf. And then they're trying to ta- tracking down uh, Kidnap Santa. So it's Chris Evans in that one as well. So it's going to be, I don't know, an action Santa Christmas movie. Sure. Yeah. And then sounds, last one sounds dumb, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't hate Violent Night, so yeah, but this is not going to get the R treatment that Violent Night did. Yeah, exactly. This is going to be like kid, kid, teen friendly. So mm-hmm. yeah, and then we've got James Cameron says Terminator Dark, Dark Fate is a cracking, but knows why it's underperformed. So he reckons he underperformed and there's new Terminators on the horizon. Let's go. I'm pumped for more. More. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't really care. I won't watch it unless you make me watch it for pod. We will. So, yeah. No. Get ready. All right. Let's jump into our first. Uh, oh, one more, one more, one more. Ah. Yep. Last of Us season two teaser is out. Oh, okay. Is Except it? for a 2025 release. Super keen. Wow. There you go. Looks sick. That's cool. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. Uh, we've got Transformers 1s. So the Autobots yes. are rolling out. So when this first got announced, I was like, why are they doing this? Like, I feel like prequels, prequels are always very, very iffy. Like, I was like, okay, what are we doing here? This is just going to mm-hmm. be a, another cash grab. But whoever, they've actually done this very, very, very well. So this is the untold origin story of Optimus Prime and Megatron, better known as sworn enemies, but who once were friends bonded like brothers who changed the fate of Cybertron forever. Bom, bom, bom. Which, yep. yeah, <laughs> I had never actually thought about. I just thought they were like common enemies, kind of like uh, G.I. Joe and Cobra or like yeah. That. That sort of sworn enemies. I never actually thought, hey, I, I just saw what... it as sorry, sorry. I was just yeah, I never thought, hey, why are Megatron and Optimus against each other? I just thought they were good guys and bad guys. Yeah, yeah, literally. I, I just saw it as Optimus stands for peace in the universe and Megatron tries to take power. That's how I've always just like, yeah, that's just there's a good guy and there's a bad guy. One guy wants power, one guy wants peace. The end. Mm, yeah. But yeah, there's more to it than that. And I think that, like you said, this is a story I didn't necessarily think needed to exist, but I'm not, not, not mad about it. No. We'll discuss it. Yeah. So this is starring Chris Hemsworth and Scarlett Johansson is also in it. Mm. So they're lending their voices. So I've got to say the first half of this film, I was like, okay, this is just... yep your buddy so they're like you've got optimus prime and megatron being their miners and they're just like bonding over them being in their current situation so Mm -hmm. they're like oh we'll be friends and they're like looking out for one another and then as it unfolds they go into a race and i'm like oh this is very very generic what what's happening here this is this is my fears yeah this is my fears 
And then after the race, they end up in a cave of sorts and they meet the, an old robot. Yeah, I miss a lot, but sure. Oh, I was just, okay. I was, I was jumping it's fine. a little bit. I just, yeah, look, yeah. The first half of the film until that robot scene, I was like, I'm, I'm hoping this is going to end soon. Yeah, it just it's just the whole thing about two guys. Oh, we're not weak. We're yes, we're miners. We don't have a transformer core, but we're better because we have heart and all this other bullshit. Yeah, uh, but yeah, then they go on this little wild adventure, the call to action, and yeah, yeah. that's when they, the you, yeah, they meet this fucking. It was a prime back in the day. Yeah. Yeah, but prior which, to that, they meet the uh, the current leader of the of the fucking. So they're called. Yeah, he, he's, uh, he's Sentinel the, Prime. He's the current Prime, voiced by John Ham. Yeah, look, I no no, I did skip over that part because I thought it was boring and generic. Until it was important to who start who Sentinel Prime is because he becomes pivotal. Yeah. Okay. Fair. Fair. But. Once they once they meet the old the old prime, and then all of a sudden they get the backstory. So you get the the story of you know the old war to the point where what happens with the actual little cores. I never actually realized that there were prime cores and different things like that. I must have missed yeah. that in the Transformers law. I just thought they were like robots that I don't know had heart. And I they- never. <clears throat> Yeah, I don't know if I close attention, to be honest. Yeah, like, <laughs> I, <laughs> I used to watch the cartoon on and off. Like, I never sat there and watched it back to back mm-hmm. consistently. Beast Wars, I yeah. got around. I loved Beast Wars. That was really, uh-huh. really cool. Um, And then the Transformers movies, I got around. But they never really touched on the cause in the movies either. Like, it wasn't a pivotal sort of thing. It was no. more about saving humanity rather than, like, yes explaining what makes them like super transforming and etc yes like, i just that's... assumed they could all do it yeah well, from the beginning 100 yeah. percent, and it turns out they can yeah. um but that's where this shines you know because we're we don't have to build a story set on earth where we're forming human connection and it's all about oh, well, how the humans react and hiding from the humans and even though they're big fucking trucks and shit um you know they, they take out all that bullshit and they can just you know there's no rules and they can actually spend time on other stuff like talking about the cause talking about the law talking about stuff that we don't normally get um exposure to because we're too focused on human interaction yeah yeah so once after that it starts it rolls pretty quickly so that first it's about 30 40 ish minutes of like developing the world and the, the characters and the, the buddy connection. But I guess without yeah. that, you wouldn't have the same payoff. So we see like we have Megatron who is very aggressive and like always wants sort of like payback. And you can see that he's like mm-hmm. slightly, slightly deranged, much more aggressive. He reminds me a lot in this from, um, of like Raphael. And Optimus Prime oh, sure. reminds me of like Leonardo, like a lot more cool, level headed. Level headed. Mm-hmm. Where like Raphael always wants to go, like, we're going to go get revenge. Like, yeah, they, yeah. they mess with us. And Straight you can to action. See, yeah. Like, you can see that where mm-hmm. once we start getting rolling and understanding, okay, there's a bigger sort of plot. Like, it's not groundbreaking in terms of the. The villain, a bit why the villain is the villain, besides there is that sort of trope that I was like, oh, okay. But you've done well, but the trope of them recording and then playing it to the rest of the the masses of like, oh, we took away all the yeah. cause and took away your freedom, etc. I was like, oh, yeah. sure, come on. <clears throat> surely, I know. surely you could have been a little bit more creative. Like you've done really well and then you, you've ran into that like trope and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. There's a lot of that. And that's why the first, I'd say the first hour just feels like generic, you know, it's obviously aimed at kids. There's not a lot of like interesting twists and turns in the story um, from the beginning. I mean, spoilers if you care, but from the beginning um, we have the the prime 
uh, what's it, what's it called again? I changed my thing. Sentinel Prime, and he's like, you know, he's the hero, and he is fighting against the the other bad guys who I forget what they're even called. It doesn't matter. Some other fucking alien race. Um, and you know, we we sold this story that he's up there fighting the good fight up there, being on the surface. Everybody else lives in the core. Um, but from the beginning, you can tell that you know this guy is not going to be the hero. You could, and basically, John Hamm for some reason is being cast more and more as like starts as a good guy, ends as a bad guy. Same thing in Baby Driver. Like he, something about him, something about his like suave nature. He plays a similar character in Black Mirror in one of the episodes as well. Um, but yeah, it's you can tell from the start how it's going to sort of go. But the last half an hour, once they finally become Transformers, um, there's some fucking awesome action scenes. The music is pretty sick. Like, I think, I'm not sure if it's originally scored or if they use stuff from pre-existing, like, pre-existing libraries or whatever, but whatever it is, fucking was epic as hell. Uh, I got really fucking emotional in this. Like, there's actual scenes I could feel myself welling up and how fucking excited I was that they were kicking ass. It was cool. Yeah. And you're right, like, because it had that generic beginning where it's just them dicking around and, oh, we're little and we're, you know, we're weak and whatever, and we see them uh, in that race. I think the race was good because it, it got we got to see them in comparison to everybody else and how fucking small and weak they are. Um, And seeing their, like, journey and rise up and kick ass and whatever in the last fight between the final forms, I guess, of uh, Megatron and, and uh, Optimus Prime. So fucking cool. Like, easily the coolest Transformers action scene I've ever seen. Yeah. I'm glad that that was the final fight. That yeah. was that was cool. Like, it was just them beating the bad guy. I was like, oh, okay. Yep. 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 I agree. We've got, like, two climaxes. It's really, really, you know, normally I'm kind of against it because you get that, like, excitement and that dwindles and then you it's hard to get re-excited. Yep. But, you know, it's the ultimate showdown. It's Megatron Optimus. Yep. And it made sense. Like, seeing... D sixteen or D they called him, which was op- which was a uh, Megatron, voiced by Brian Tyree Henry from um, some Bullet Train movie. Yeah, yep. Um, seeing over time, you know, his whole thing is I hate authority. Like I've been lied to. I don't trust anybody, and because he can't trust people, he you know anyone who gets in his way is just the enemy. And like mm-hmm. that makes sense, and it made because you know at the beginning I'm like, how the fuck are they going to justify this friend becoming the tyrant warlord that is Megatron? That actually made a lot of sense in an hour and a half in a kids movie. I was super yeah. impressed. Like it was, yeah, that was a, an aggressive turnaround for character development. Like it was, they pushed it quick, but they did it well to yep. the point where there's even Star Scream. Who you hate, Starscream? Like he's always a, uh, yeah. He's, he's that like little sly a, cunt. Yeah, like he's going to attack, and then all of a sudden, if things are not going his way, he's going to save yep. himself and retreat. And yep. he does that, which is voiced by Stephen Buscemi. Yeah, Steve Buscemi, I know. Yeah, right. There's a lot of big names in this. Yeah, I mean, big Michael it, Key is uh is B, which yeah. is more or less Bum- Bumblebee. Also, B talks a lot, and I was like, okay, have they just done this to make a reason why he actually doesn't talk in all the other films? Because they were like, you talk too much. And then it was like the opposite opposite to him in the actual like film. And- yeah, maybe that's the joke, I guess. Yeah, he I was like, up. okay, sure. He, he did get a little annoying, and I, do you know, I hated the um, badass Tron. That joke was so overdone. But you know what? At the end, when he's got his fucking knife hands and he's got his helmet and he's kicking ass and he, he says bad Acetron mid-fight, I giggled. Yeah. He got me. I was like, you know yeah. what? That's that's actually not too bad. Because by then it was kind of really funny again because it had <laughs> been like half an hour since he, said it, since he said it last time. Yeah, but that, that one's actually in context rather than just watching you transform yeah. and going, bad Acetron. Yeah. It's very like... We want to appeal to children. There's a lot of that where, like, there's a bit of, there's a bit of lost in target audience. You know, yeah. there's some moments that are really like childish and, you know, 
funny for kids and there are moments that are really like and quite badass no pun intended Yeah. I also didn't realize that once you get a prime core, you become like way taller and massive. Like, yeah seems like the core you have dramatically changes your like stature and outward appearance yeah, which I know. makes sense i guess Yeah. I never realized it because um, Optimus never looked that big. Like he was quite small. And then all of a sudden at the end, he was like massive, like towering over the Mm, other ones. absolutely and he is in the like what we've seen as well in the in the cartoons and stuff Yeah, like he's, Michael Bay films yeah, he's always much taller. But I like. loved seeing, um, because the the planet itself is a transformer, and I love seeing, you know, we got to see how the world works, like the the city transforms and the roads like don't even exist until someone's driving on them. Like I loved seeing Cybertron as this like. ever flowing entity and feeling alive like that was really fucking cool Yeah, because in the show you only get to see bits and pieces of it, like of yeah them, flashbacks like, yeah, reminiscing or whatever. <clears throat> mm-hmm. definitely this was yeah this is really sweet and again it's proof <clears throat> that transformers should solely exist as an animation entity like it's so much better as animation so much better yeah, I mean it gives you a A lot more creative freedom and it'd be way cheaper than trying to CGI everything in. Uh, yeah, probably. Because yeah, you'd already have a plan. You'd be able to execute that plan rather than going, we're going to film here and then you need to render all these different scenes and you need to do this. Yeah. The problem with CGI is they always try to make it as cheap as possible. Whereas I think animation, you know, you create a budget for how good you want it to look from the beginning. Yeah. For CGI, they try to use as little as possible because it's expensive per scene or per frame, really. True. But yeah, it was. Yeah, and it's look good. It looked good too. Like Yeah. the reflections and everything on their armor look fucking great. I wouldn't put it up there with like Last Wish or, um, you know, more uh, Nimona or anything like that. But it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's it fit the fit the transformer build, so I liked it. I like the transform how they transformed. Like it wasn't just all of a sudden you were able to quickly transform and like you saw them struggle with it. It was like all brand new. Like it was Yeah. all right. But overall, like they did really well for a, Yeah. Mm-hmm. a movie that I thought didn't need to exist. Yeah, I wasn't excited for it. Like I was, you know, sure, I'll watch it. Like it was the one, it was the thing I watched last. Uh, no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. It was the thing I, just can, I care the least about. You know, every week there's always at least one thing that I'm like, yeah, I'll watch it, but I'm not that excited. Ended up being my favorite thing of the week. This was sick. Yeah, What'd you One give thing it? I will say, Mm. one quickly before I get to a number, um, I, again, am sick of people being cast for star power instead of actual talent. Actors can't do what voice actors can do. I know that it was fine, but Chris Hemsworth might as well have been just someone's dad. Like, he didn't bring anything special to the role besides star power. Scarlett Johansson's fine, but... I don't know. I don't think she was really that fitting either. Um, King Michael Key is a voice actor, so I think he did pretty well. I think Meg- Megatron was fine, but not interesting. I don't know. I just think stop casting actors as as animated voices just because they bring a certain star power. Voice actors are better at what they do. That's that's you know I've said that many times in this podcast, but anyway, uh, for me it's a four. It's fucking great. It's better than I thought it would be. The first hour was quite unexciting, um, but it's kind of necessary because it sets up the excitement for later. And without that time spent, I don't think it would have been as impactful. Uh, so, yeah, four. Very good. Yeah. At least it wasn't Chris Pratt. Yeah, it could have been worse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give yeah, me that. I, I'm with you. It's out of four. Like, I really Yep. enjoyed it. The, <clears throat> the first hour, I was like, hmm. I am almost ready to play some squad battles on FC24 while this is playing because I don't care. And then Yep. all of a sudden it kicked off and I was like, okay. Uh huh. All right, we're in, we're locked in. So, yeah, really fun. 
Really it's going through it now to see where the point is. Oh, there you go. Fifty-eight minutes. Well, that's fifty-eight. Fifty-eight minutes. minutes is the is the chase scene where they first transform. So it's pretty much an hour before they even get the ability to transform. Um, and then the last like forty minutes is is sick. Yeah, real good. That that forty minutes felt like five minutes. Like it was just, I was yeah. so, so dialed in. Yeah, first hour felt like three, and the last forty minutes felt like ten. Yeah, you're not wrong. Yeah, it was killer. All right. So let's jump in to our new Netflix big special. It is a 10-episode series, which Netflix have been advertising. Like it's had a bit of a publicity roller coaster. They've thrown a lot of money at the publicity because I've seen oh, adverts. Really? Yeah, I've seen adverts everywhere for this. Oh, I mean, besides Netflix, I haven't seen it anywhere. Oh, really? Interesting. Maybe mm. it's just my phone listening to me, and it's like, oh, you know, you know, it does. Yeah, that. and then all of a sudden, it knows it's you such... fucking have a weakness for Chris and Bell. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, listens to me. But this is uh, nobody wants this. It's out now. This is uh, follows the unexpected relationship between a rogue rabbi and a. I have no idea how to say this word. Irrescribable, loud, agnostic woman. I have no idea what that word is. I've never seen it in my life. Oh. Erasable. Ir- ir- irascible? Yeah, right. I don't know what that word is either. Right. Having or showing a tendency to be easily angered. Oh, that's me. I should know this word. <laughs> I'm going right. to look up pronunciation because I want to know how to... Oh, good, You're right. Good. It's not. It's not just my uh, lack of English skills. It's uh, irascible. You know. Okay, there you go. Irascible. Uh, irascible. There you go. You're right. Showing our ignorance. Irascible. Mm. English is our first language, so yeah. Yeah, but there's many fucking weird words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Irascible, so, loud, agnostic woman. Yep. Yep. This is a bit of a, what's it called, a reunion for The Good Place and also a little bit for Veronica Mars. So we've got a couple of cameo appearances. So from... There's only one other character besides Kristen in Good Place. Yeah, but you you still got a couple of them in there. Like You've got... Um, Janet. Janet's in there and then also... Uh, Kyle is Dick Casanova from Veronica Mars, who actually got oh, his own sure. spin spin off movie from the series. He was he's your like larrikin sort of rich party boy person in Veronica Mars, right? And he Kyle is kind of similar to that character, like he plays the same character. He's Kyle sure. in this one, yeah, yeah. So, Never seen Veronica Mars? No, oh, mate. It's, I've seen it twice. It's a show. Saying, that saying a lot twice. for you. Mm. Yeah. I love it. Uh, this is also starring Adam Brody as well, who was in the OC. He was a Seth. Pretty sure it was Seth. Yeah, Seth. I'm going to back myself. Who? So. Yep, Seth Cohen, who was like the offsider to Ryan, who was like, the main character in those. And who's this? Adam Brody, sorry. Adam Brody, yep. Right, who, right. Who, the rabbi. The, who's the rabbi. Mm-hmm. So this is following our, I guess, couple. So they're our two main leads. We got uh, Joanne and Noah, who one is, Joanne is a podcaster who talks a lot about sex and relationships and all the bits yep. and pieces. And then we've got a Noah, who's the rabbi, who comes from a Jewish family who uh, extremely, I don't, I don't know how to put this, but extremely traditional Jewish mm-hmm. beliefs. Um, yep. Yep. They don't like outsiders. You've got to marry into the Jewish um, family. and then, Definitely. It's, it's sort of causing a lot of conflict because Noah goes through a breakup and this happens early in episode one. We get to see Noah all of a sudden, his current partner is wearing a ring and they're at like his brother's house and he's like, where's this ring from? And then she unlocked a drawer, put a ring on and this causes a big argument and they 
separate from there. And then we get to a party. So the party is a mutual friend, which is Ashley. Ashley is a very blunt kind of, I found it quite amusing. Yeah, she, no, I like she, her. Yeah. Um, she has these sophisticated sort of you got to be somebody sort of mm-hmm. parties. Dinner parties, yeah. Yeah. And then we get our first interaction with Joanne and Noah. So Noah's not your stereotypical rabbi. He's a bit, as they put it, rogue. Like he yes. is, is um, sort of, yeah, everyday sort of guy who's just trying to live his life. He's got this good sense of humor. He's floating around, mm-hmm. does bits and pieces. And then you got Joanne, who is very outlandish, very like, will do whatever she wants, sort of, you know, strong, independent female, sort of. Yeah. Strong lady. What I Kristen find, Bell was sort of known for playing. Yeah, that's what that's what she plays pretty much. Mm-hmm. Every, every every series, whether it's Good Life, Veronica Mars, etc. She's pretty much playing those two characters. Good Life. Mashed, yeah, mashed into one. So, yeah. Yeah, they make a... Oh, good uh, Life. They make a unlikely couple but they sort of hit it off and she doesn't realize that he's the rabbi and there's a whole running gag that the guy that looks like a rabbi at the end of the table is not a rabbi yeah <laughs> and... oh you're the asshole yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was good yeah i found this actually very very comical like i was laughing quite a lot in the first three episodes, I want to mm-hmm. get my wife to watch it because I feel like she'll really enjoy this one because it's... Ditto, to be honest, yeah. It's crude humour. It's not your standard, like, ah, uh, you you did something funny, you didn't, like, fall over. It's, like, actually reasonably well-crafted, kind of that awkward humour into those yeah, situations. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it is well-written, I think. It's, um, it's a pretty intelligent show. Yeah. I find the brother very, very awkward and amusing as well. Like yeah, he's, he's just, great. <laughs> he's, he's just there, just bumbling yeah, around. He's my favorite. Uh, was his name Sasha? Sasha, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's yeah, the, he's, he's great. He's the complete opposite to Noah. Noah's like very um, intelligent, very like calculated, very cool. Where Sasha's just yeah, charismatic. Yeah, Sasha's just your big oaf. That's just yeah. Just Sasha around. reminds me of um, like a uh, I forget his name in the show. Jesus Christ! But Jason Segel's character in um, How Many Mother? Oh yeah, yeah. What the fuck's his name? Oh my god! I watched that show so much back in the day. Marshall. Yeah, Marshall. Oh. Yeah, but like, yeah, just a bit more inappropriate. <laughs> yeah, I find him less like. I found Marshall very out there like he'd just go on these random like outbursts because that's what the show sort of needed yeah where this is like if it was i don't know more real life sort of style like he's just yeah around, yeah wants to be included and yeah yeah like, mother's very like cartoony yeah that's, mm-hmm. yeah like the i think it was episode two where um joanne and noah were like oh do you want to come for a drink was uh, after she goes to the, the temple where he's doing his yeah uh, like is it a Jewish temple or is it a church? It's I, a temple. Yep, it is temple. Temple. Yep. Yep. Nice goes, job. Yep. Goes there and then they're like, "Oh, do you want to come for a drink?" And then <laughs> Sasha's like, "Yeah, I'll come." He for just a gets drink. in the car. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> where we go and gets in the car. She's like, "I was inviting you." <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, and then he's there, and his wife's like beeping the horn in the car. She's like, "Don't worry, she'll tire her out." She's like a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> Like it's it's very fun. It's very engaging. I was expecting this to just yeah. be like your standard rom com, but it's like a it kind of is. Yeah, so like you feel like they're gonna just get together and beat the beat the what's it called the stigma that the I still reckon episode eight ish there'll be the black moment where they break up and will they won't they and then. That's my oh, problem with shows like this or movies like this and rom- and romantic movies in general is that it follows the same pattern and it's so easy to predict. But I could be wrong. Could I could be. be wrong. I have been wrong before. 
I am curious to watch him more. I've seen four episodes. Nice. I literally finished episode three while <laughs> I was doing the, the back picture, which looks like weird. It looks, looks like, like they're just <laughs> smashing their heads together. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, it's it's very, very fun. I have had a great time with it so far. It is, it's MA for us, which would probably mean it's a an R in America. Because mm. our MA is like R in America, isn't it? Correct, yeah. Yeah. So, like, they allow for the the adult topics. They allow for some mm-hmm. what's uh, some some language, etc. But like, yeah, there's a scene where Joanne and Noah are out buying the the obliterator, a fucking like ultra mega dildo. Yeah. Like you know, there's there's a lot of like sexual references and uh, Sasha does a lot of like he eats gummies like weed gets high and stuff like you know there's a lot of like adult themes and stuff yeah. which i think adds to the show because again it's real like that's how adult humans interact and and you know these things and that's how it is rather than trying to fucking hide all that stuff like the cartoony how mother yeah. and to their credit they actually feel like reasonably normal humans rather than like yeah yep i don't know super successful I don't know, billionaires or CEOs mm. or whatever. But like they actually feel like just mm-hmm. the average human trying to navigate all through flawed. life. Yeah. 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 I think a big part of making a a show in general realistic is having characters with flaws, even the main character. And that's what I appreciate with this. I can't fucking stand her sister, but I think yeah. that's part of it, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, her and her sister are best friends because they're sisters. They're not like... yeah. But they wouldn't be friends if it was not yeah. family. Well, Joanne says she's my closest ally and my worst enemy. Yeah. yeah. And that's, you know, very much what siblings are. Yeah. So it's, I really enjoyed this. I've only seen three. I want to re watch those three and get my wife to watch it. I think it's a very, very well written, very intelligent show. Hopefully they're able to do it justice over what the 10 episodes. That is my concern. Is that 10, mm-hmm. ep- 10 episodes with this, like just telling a, a love story about yes. na- navigating through the will they, won't they, can they survive the, mm-hmm. the, st- the standard sort of realm of she's outside of the the mould of what you're allowed to do? Is it going to cause conflict? So like the end of episode three, they're like, Oh, you're not just breaking up with one person, you're breaking up with the family or whatever it was because um, the friend was saying, like, you need to go get back with your fiancé. I forget her. What was her name? Um, oh, Beck or something? I don't know if I can Yeah, care. Rebecca. Was, was it Rebecca? Rebecca? Yeah. That sounds something right. Like, yeah. Something like that because she has a car accident and then there's missed calls and then... There's a whole they, um, Noah and Joanna finally kiss, and it was like, yeah. oh, we we finally had our connection. And then she sends him a text, and there's no like whatever. She freaks out, mm-hmm. and he's like dealing with the the family of his his ex partner and his family, which are all there, and it's like, yeah, a bit of chaos to navigate through. It's it's. It's going to be interesting. Ten episodes. They, they're what? It's like a lot. Tw- Twenty-seven minutes a piece. Yeah. So they're not like the 40, 40 minutes sort of realm. So they might, which might is be able good to do justice. Like who knows? Yeah, it all depends on the on the twists and turns. If 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 it turns out to just be the generic, you know, will they, won't they, at the end, and they get together the last episode, everything's good again, and we get the fucking what happens next, and like, she's pregnant, whatever. Um, if it follows the same beats that I expect, then it's it's fine. It's still it's still a, a good version of that story, but it's still generic, you know. Yeah. Look, um, uh, I'm still having a great time with it so far. Yeah, I, I'm having fun. Like it's enjoyable, and it's it's an easy watch. Like you don't have to fucking stare at the screen, and you know, I laugh a few times. There's there's a lot to enjoy. But you know, it's still a it's still a rom com, end of the day. And unless there's more to it, 
I could I could be wrong. If they end up not staying together, or if they he, ha he has some big secret that we find out later or something that you know there's there's more to it than just what we see so far, or the Mitsui Transformers. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I'm I'm apprehensive. I suppose. Okay. Yeah. There's also a, a level of disconnect for us again. Same with that Jonah Hill. Um, was that Jonah Hill one where he dates the black girl and? Oh yeah, uh, exposing he was Jewish and exposing him to black culture and exposing her to Jewish culture and it's the same disconnect as well. Like we don't, as in Australia, we don't have a lot of Jewish communities. Um, we're not very exposed to it. My only exposure to Jewish community is American television and or movies. You know, yep. Um, so yeah, there's there's the level of like I don't know what's going on and I don't have any connection to this, but you know that's not their fault. No. It's just. Geographical. <laughs> yeah. What would you what would you give it then? Uh I'm somewhere in the realm of like a three to a three and a half. If if it's if it ends up being you know generic, the the plot doesn't really go anywhere. And it's what I expect it to be, it's a three. It's enjoyable, but it's not uh groundbreaking and, and super interesting. Uh but you know, three makes it recommendable. Okay. But if it if it ends up doing some more and I'm having a pretty good time like comedy wise and stuff right now, three and a half, Yeah, but it's, it's tentative. Yep. All right. Well, are you? I'm a four. I'm an easy four. Yeah. Yep. I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah. Yep. Um, I'm enjoying it heaps more than I thought. I thought this was just going to be your sort of standard rom-com where it's like mm -hmm. I don't know, 10 episodes of will they, won't they, no humor mm -hmm. sort of just flow through meet the family, not meet the family, have that black moment. But it's actually, it's it's quite enjoyable. I'm having a good time. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I am already sick of the Jewish family. Like, it's the same shit. It's the same trope we see in every Jewish story. Yeah. Uh, she's a shiksa and all yeah. that. And already they're annoying me because it's like, just get the fuck over yourselves, not your life. But that's that's the point. Yeah, they're yep. meant to be over the top and overbearing, all sort of stuff. Yep. So, I did yeah. laugh when they were like, "Oh, maybe we can rename our podcast to like Shixers or whatever it was." was uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like sexy, yeah, was funny. Shiklers or whatever, Se sexy Shixers. Yeah, that's yeah. it. <laughs> Make it <laughs> sexy. They're pretty fun. They poke fun at things. I like it. Yeah. Hopefully, it's good. Um, Kristen Bell, absolutely incredible. Always. A pretty good job. Plays the character mm. well. Plays the same character, but does it well. Yeah. She's really good at playing, like, a likable... I hate the word because it's it's a woman misogy misogynist at this point, but, like, a likable bitch. Like, she's good at, you know, being abrasive, but also her character's always right. Yeah. So, yeah. Which is normally hard to, to get across to be likable. Mm -hmm. You're just like, mm, okay. Mm -hmm. It's like a character's got to have heart. She does. Yeah, it's like a likable Regina George, Regina George kinda. Fuck man, I really want someone to make a Photoshop image of of Jaws with blonde hair and <laughs> and wearing a bra with uh we're wearing a shirt with holes cut out the nips. Regina <laughs> Jaws. <laughs> yeah, I'm on a roll today. You're doing well. Mm. Monday Monday mm. mornings aren't for you. Well, normally I'm working, but you know school holidays. Mm -hmm. Which is right. throwing my vocab off, apparently. Yeah. Who, who, right. who knows? Jolie. <laughs> All right, Will and Harper, let's do it. Uh, Will and Harper, this is something I never would have thought I would ever be watching. This mm. was very, very different. This is also on Netflix, which is out now. I was expecting a movie. I wasn't expecting, like, a documentary. I feel like this is more a documentary than it is a film. It's a doco. Yeah, yeah, 100%. It is. I was expecting if I thought this was a film. I didn't realize this oh. was this was like real life. Like All oh, right. I was expecting right. a film. Like I thought this was even when it came up on movie news, I thought this was a film. I was like, oh, oh. Will and, Will and Harper. <laughs> like Will Ferrell was going across America with a his um transgender friend. I was like, oh, okay, that's a it's a different sort of take on a film. Sure. Right. Very. I did, I did not realize that this was a doco at all. Yeah. 
well, you know, it's probably still elements of scripting. Uh, but yeah, it's a doco. Interesting. I knew that from the beginning because when I first saw promotional material for it, it was um, Will and Harper like doing interviews okay. and talking about the journey and talking about like the transition and that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, so I knew it was a doco from the beginning. <laughs> How funny. Well, I did not. <laughs> no, no so that's fair. I watched, I watched it this morning. I'm like, what is happening here? What's that? <laughs> this, this Why is does this feel real? Yeah, this is this is not your standard you know, like movie intro. What's happening? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So did you cool. how long did it how long did it take you to go from mockumentary to documentary? Like when what was the point you realized this was real? Oh, I never thought this was a mockumentary. Sure. Okay. I th- I thought so as soon as a- the opening shot of Will being interviewed, you're like, Oh yeah, this is a doco, my bad. Yeah. I was like, what sure. is- Yeah, I was I was confused for like after the intro, I was like, oh, okay, this is actual, this right. is real life. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah. I don't know. Besides that, this is in this intimate portrayal of friendship, transi- uh, transition, and America, Will Ferrell and his close friend of 30 years decide to go on a cross-country road trip to explore a new chapter in their relationship. Mm-hmm. So this is, again, this is very outside of my I don't know, general scope of like things. So I don't know many transitioned people or people that are transitioning. So a lot of this information was like kind of new to me. I know like bits and pieces of the whole process of when you transition from, in this case, it was male to female. Yeah. Um, it puts an interesting perspective on things because I've never thought about it besides the controversy that happens around Olympics time, like in the sport realm, like I'm all over the the males that transition into females going into sport and that creates a whole interesting debate. But like just your, your general day-to-day person that transitions from male to female or vice versa, I was like, I've never actually thought about what that like impact that would have. Like it's never been a realm of thought that I've mm. had. Mm-hmm. Where this sort of is like, oh, yeah, that that would make sense. Oh, okay, yeah, that that's kind of interesting. I've never, yeah. yeah, it's a perspective that we are privileged enough not to have to think about. Yeah, so no, it was it was interesting. So Will and his friend Harper, Harper Steele, uh, Harper Steele. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've been friends for 30 years. Um, they've, well, Harper's was supportive of Will throughout his like up and coming um, stardom, I guess. Yeah. So to say, they were early like, days on SNL. Yeah. They're like, this guy's not very funny, et cetera. He mm-hmm. doesn't come across well. And he, he um, Harper's like, no, it's a stick with him. He's actually quite funny. He'll find his way. Mm-hmm. Obviously, he then goes through it, but the focus is on Harper and the journey that Harper's going on from transitioning to male to female. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, and it's them, it. yeah, because when uh, Dead Name Andrew, when before Harper transitioned, uh, they were like traveled the country all the time, we used to do a bit of trucking. Um, you know, their their favorite thing ever was going to like dive bars and meeting people and you know, going to like sporting events and just, you know, going across the country meeting meeting strangers. And it's a very different experience meeting strangers as a a red blooded American man versus a well, transitioned or even even a woman full stop, but uh, you know, a transitioned woman. Um yeah, and it's in it's an interesting perspective because it's like not only are you a woman, uh, and I think I think if if she was you know uh, as she says like passing uh, and was more passable, didn't have a voice, didn't have as she, she says a masculine f- uh, face, um, it, it would be maybe less daunting because it's not so much about being a woman; it's about being a transitioned woman, and she recognizes the difference there. Um, but yeah, it is it is interesting because we don't we don't see the world through that lens. And for someone like her who has spent 
a lot of her adult male life traveling um, and now doing it all over again as a completely different person, but also, you know, not having to wear a mask anymore. All this time when she was traveling as a man, she was pretending to be a man. Now she can kind of be herself sort of thing. So, yeah, it's warming at times for sure. Yeah. You know, they let their guard down and whatever. Yeah. Like, I found it very eye-opening because I've never thought about those whole bits mm. and pieces because there's even towards the end it was, they were talking with Harper about, like, um, do you want to have, a, like, a relationship with someone else? Like, do you still want people to be, like, come up to you and have that sort of, like, um, engagement with someone, whether it be, like, mm-hmm. just your standard interaction or is it, like, a romantic interest? Like, do you want something? Like, I was like, oh never thought about that and that was like following after the her her sort of breakdown of saying like she has a very masculine face Mm. um and like all sorts of implications so that sort of has on her like self-esteem and bits and pieces as well i was like my sorry i was like yeah i've never thought about that as well yeah, exactly. I think that's why it's, it is so good because people like yourself who aren't like you're not transphobic, um, and you're not homophobic or anything, but you're also ignorant. It's not ignorant is not in a negative way. You just don't know. You're oh, just, you're just I'm not oblivious aware. to many, many oblivious. Things. That's probably a better way of putting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's, that you're like the perfect audience because it's not about trying to convince people. Um, that trans people are people too or trans rights are, are, are human rights or anything like that. It's not about trying to, it doesn't have an agenda like that. It's just like for those who may not be exposed to it, for those who are just a little bit oblivious to the world of, of a trans person, um, here's a bit of the you know day in the life. Um, and I think that's that's where it shines. I do wish everywhere they went, they didn't bring it up. Like, Everywhere, everywhere they go, she will bring up, I'm traveling as a transitioned woman. And like, why not just, there was one time where um, they were getting, they were getting served at like a a diner. Yeah. And and the woman, the woman misgendered her and said, and and for the sir, and for you, sir. And and, um, she was like, oh, ma'am. There was one time where she was misgendered. And I was like, okay, like, you know. That was nice, not nice. It was horrible. Like you know, obviously not what you want, but it was good from our perspective as an audience to see that happen because we every other time in the show, we don't get to see if people misgender her because very early in the conversation, either her or Will will bring up that she's trans transgender or that she's transition. And I got annoyed at that because I was like, give people a chance to like. I I would honestly look at her. And think it's a woman because older women, you know, their voice starts to change anyway. You know, it's part of when you go through menopause and estrogen and, you know, depletes and all sort of stuff. Like you, you, you do have a bit more of a masculine voice. Um, You know, you could be a smoker, that sort of shit. Like I honestly wouldn't think that she's transgender or a transition woman. I would think she's just an old woman. And like, if someone said that to me, like, okay, cool. Like it doesn't change anything. Uh, Mm -hmm. I just wish they I just wish they wouldn't every single time they have interaction with someone mention it yeah. and give people the opportunity to to make an assumption, whether it's right or wrong. And and you know, maybe challenge the assumption later if you need to, but also give people the chance to just assume she's a woman. Yeah. That that scene, I was like, oh I I don't know. I don't use gender terms at all. I call everybody like I might like <laughs> Yeah. I was yeah. Like even when I was serving people at like Back in the day, yeah, pre, yeah, pre, like have to work retail while you're at uni. I was like, yeah, hey, what can I get you? How are you today? Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I would ne- I never went and for you, sir, or you, madam. Like, yeah, yeah, it's a weird, but I guess I it's... notice I say, hey, fellas. Oh, I say, oh, hey, hey, guys. And like guys, a guys is a is a gendered collective noun, supposedly. Okay. Um, but yeah, I I, I noticed it yesterday. I literally yesterday when I was working at the tattoo studio um, said to a group of three people, Hey fellas, how are you going? And then when I was taking their names, one of them had um, 
you know, a, a female, like a, a typical female name. And I realized at that point I've misgendered this person. And um, I mean, me saying, hey, fellas, that's, you know, a mistake that I made. I didn't correct myself. Maybe I should have. Um, but yeah, I just realized that I, I didn't say, you know, hello, man. Um, but, you know, it's one of those things. I just colloquially say, hey, fellas, or what's going on, guys, or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know. It's a hard habit to break. It is. And I, and people who know me know that, you know, I'm very, well, I mean, I literally started Rainbow Alliances at, at multiple schools. Like, that's something I really care about. I'm, I'm, I would say, well, I'm part of the community as well. Um, but yeah, it's hard. It is, it is hard because it's not an intentional thing. Um, and, you know, when you make assumptions, I guess that's, that's the thing you should, you should always use they thems if you're unsure until someone does give you a correct pronoun but i guess i'm you know got my own journey to work on as well and that's part of the development yeah um but yeah this is uh poignant it was a really interesting i would have preferred this as a tv show okay yeah i think that like the the, the dinner scene with like tina fey and tim meadows um, Seth Myers is there, like heaps of the old um, SNL cast. Obviously, Tina Fey was was a big part of the writing team and, and producer and stuff for years and years and years at SNL. Um, I yeah, I would have really enjoyed more of that dinner scene, but it was like three minutes. And if you heard Tina say one thing, and I'm like, I I love these people. Like I used to watch so much SNL, and give you more of that. Like every everything felt rapid. They went from one side of America to the next, which is relatively the same size as Australia, in two hours for us. Yeah. Give me a full, give me a full show. Okay. Yeah, I got a little bit over them just traveling to one spot to the next, though. I was like, oh, okay. What I wanted to know was like the hormone replacement therapy backside. What was that? Tell me more. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. what was that? How does it work? Like. You're taking estrogen now? Like, how do you balance out the testosterone to estrogen? I was like, oh, I feel like that for me, only because like bodybuilding shows and I like to delve into the yeah. side of like the Olympia stage where the the whole yeah, like yeah. P- PEDs and how they balance all the different hormones and stuff. I was like, how does yeah. this work? Well, look at like uh, Idiot Abroad or the fucking Jack Whitehall show, both of them. And how they go from place to place and they and they spend time with people and learning stuff and having discussions. Like it would be cool if there was an episode where, you know, they spend 10 minutes with uh, a doctor who specializes in specializes in transitioning. Mm. And, you know, we'll get to ask all these questions about because you know, you don't expect Harper to know all this stuff about hormone. Maybe maybe she does, but you know, maybe she doesn't, and maybe we'll want to ask these like nitty gritty questions and even if it's scripted there's some questions that are just for the audience like i think just more time spent on details would have really helped this as a show but it's my opinion i suppose yeah yeah so it was it was definitely interesting um, i found it mm. slow at times even like when they chose to just show them eating the steak i was like huh, yeah what's that that's a tough scene yeah that's one thing too is like you also get to see what it's like as a celebrity because fucking everywhere will goes everyone's filming him and following him and there's also crazy moments where people don't even recognize who he is though yeah which is interesting (laughs) yeah um like the what's it what's the one wheeled bike monocycle a unicycle unicycle where Mm. he's like hey it's a cool bike. Can we borrow your bike? And he's like, "What? Why? <laughs> why? Literally, why?" That that felt scripted too. Like, who the fuck just rides a unicycle down the street? I don't know. I've I've actually seen people randomly do it. Even like the, the- I don't know. It, it felt really coincidental. Like the one time that they're at this house for maybe ten minutes and half an hour, happens to be a fucking random kid riding past who also was like, um. Almost like uh, what's the word I want? Like uh, agendered. Like they they presented very uh, gender ambiguous. This person on the unicycle, and it felt like it just felt planted. 
Okay. But whatever. Even if it was, who cares? Yeah, I was like, oh, okay, cool. I didn't I didn't realize there were a gendered as well. Like, oh, it's just a kid. Well, did you assume that there are a, a man, a, a boy, or a girl, the person on the unicycle? I don't know. I just thought it was a person riding a unicycle. I didn't, yeah, well, I, I didn't think anything of it. I was like, why are you yeah, yeah, riding yeah. a unicycle? The unicycle was the interesting part, not yeah, not their gender. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't care. I was like, that's just weird. Well, no, of why. course, it wasn't about caring, but yeah, I just felt like they. The way they showed that character just felt a little bit like this seems, yeah, I don't know. It, I'm, maybe I'm just skeptical. I can't like watch docos like this, especially with an actor. Like, Will is always on. Holy shit. Like, he is, I'm not sure. Like, at first, I thought he was, um, you know, playing it up for the camera and sort of just doing his like riff that he does when he's in front of the camera and, you know, the, the ad libbing stuff where he's always just trying to make jokes. But, I think that's Will. I think he's just always on. Yeah. <laughs> always that's... trying to be funny and I don't know. I feel like he that's how he deals with life. Anytime there's something yeah. like slightly uncomfortable, he's like, uh, oh, joke. Mm. Well Harper even says, um, you'll do anything for the comedy. Like comedy above all else. Like the scene where he's in his like uh, American Speedos and you know, he's talking about being vulnerable and he doesn't like his body anymore and all that sort of stuff. But he's like anything for the comedy, like what trumps anything in my life, whether it's, you know, tough moments or insecurities or whatever is funny. If it's funny, it's worth it. And that's so, that's very much how Will presents in this as well. Like everything's a joke, yeah. always making jokes. I loved, um, what was the one? Are you a worse driver now that you're a woman? <laughs> <laughs> and Harper's like, oh, come on. Oh, Jesus. It's like, zing, woo. And then Harper's like, but I am. Yep, yep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so funny. Yeah. They have good chemistry. They're pretty funny. Mm. I, I'm interested to see reviews on this because I, I feel like it's yeah. going to be, there's going to be polar opposite reviews. Like there's going to be, yeah. People that are like, yep, it's eye opening. It's it's like really raw because it's it's a lot of it shot. It feels like it's it's not super high quality. Like I don't feel like it's yeah. shot with your your standard big video camera. Like it feels like it's shot with your standard, I don't know, camera you buy from the store, and that's just them traveling yeah. around. Well, the shots when they're inside the car. Um, there's a shot later when they pull up at. Harper's sister, Harper's sister's house. And they pull up at the house and you can see right at the front of the car is a GoPro. Like the shots from inside the car are literally filmed with a GoPro. You know, it's very accessible. So, yeah, it does have that sort of feeling that you just off with some friends filming. Um, but there are times where, you know, on the hot air balloon, you can see there's a guy with a big fucking camera on his shoulder. So there's a, a bit of both. Yeah. But- but I even feel like those scenes where it's like with the proper cameras, like I feel like they've put a filter on it to make it look similar to the GoPro stuff. Like I always feel like there's a, a filter on it. Not to the point mm-hmm. where it's like the yellow CSI Miami sort of filter, but it do feel no, like no. majority of it's they've tried to match the camera footage from the GoPro yep. to the, yep. the professional style. Like there is yep. a difference, but I still feel like there's a grainy type of filter on it. Whether that's a artistic choice yeah. to make it feel more like raw, like it's just you potentially are a fly on the wall, sort of like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're, you're along for this journey. I, or it could know. be just they want consistency between shots as well. Yeah, a bit of yeah. both, but probably. Yeah, like yeah, I'm not, that's a good point. Not sure, but well yeah. observed. Hmm. Uh, the reviews are pretty good. People like the highest review is a four, uh, four or five. It's, you know, very, very low, very little reviews, uh, two and a half or less on letterbox. I mean, okay. Um, 7%, three, 16%, three and a half, and then like 40% four star yeah. and above. So yeah, it's reviewed pretty well, but letterbox is a very, um, you know, there's no fucking rednecks on letterbox really. You know, it's it's like a yeah. hipster fucking progressive community. So, because I, I liked, I wish I did more of that. Um, the scene where yeah, they did the dinner, 
uh, and he was dressed as Sherlock, which pissed me off, but I guess it made sense, like, whatever. Um, when they they finish with that scene and they get to the scene in the car next and they, they the transition is done um, with, like, tweets coming up, like, who's that monster across from Will and you mean Mr. Steel and shit like that. Um, I, I kind of wish they had more of that, like, more because I'm not exp- that's one thing I'm not exposed to I'm not exposed to the hate and and the the transphobia and the homophobia so I'm not, I'm not exposed to that that's not the communities that I'm in um so it would be nice not nice I guess but it would be interesting I guess to see more of that but again they shouldn't have done that in a two hour long video but if it was if it was a TV show maybe yeah go go introduce her to some transphobic people and don't tell them that she's trans and see if they can even fucking pick it up. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Look, the, the tweets and stuff are, are pretty wild. Like they're pretty, it's tough. They're pretty aggressive, but like, yeah. if you're like, it's like anything, if you're putting media out onto the internet and you've, you've got a big name that's attached to it, who has yep. a big reach, like it doesn't yep. matter if you're the, doesn't matter what you're doing. People are, gonna yep. hate you and it's the internet the yep. internet is a wild place it's faceless you can say whatever you want like yeah people wouldn't say that in real life but nah. it's like you put anything on the internet you got to expect there's going to be some hate there's going to be some like hurtful comments like yeah regardless of what it she, is his level of fame yeah even if it's one percent i always think of this way even if it's one percent of people are uh, filled with hate and want to and want to say something even if there's a hundred thousand eyes, that's still a thousand people who are going to speak up with hate, and that's a lot of people, you know. Yeah, yeah. Hey, look, it's no, not even really close. But my uh, little YouTube channel, I get, mm. I, I get some cracker comments. Yeah, then, no shit. Yeah. And that's that's. You just very, feel entitled to say something. It's like why? Like it's a it's a much smaller, and mm. like. I'm just putting gameplay clips on there, like you documenting your transition from male to female, which is yes. like super personal, super like yeah. passionate and et cetera. Like it's those yeah. comments are going to hit way harder than being like, Yo, definitely you, you suck at this video game. Like, yes, because it's, it's something that people take a side on people playing games. There's no, you know, there's no side to take on that, but something like transgender you're either pro or against. There's not really much middle ground. Yeah. So. Look, yeah, you're not wrong. I would have liked to see more of them dealing with that rather than yep. some of like just your, your buddy, buddy sort of like traveling in the car, which like a lot of it was fine. I was like, okay, let's, mm. let's progress a little bit here. Like what are, sure. we, yeah. what are we doing? I want a more human interaction because I'd say probably half of it is them talking, which is fine because it's about them. It's not necessarily about the journey. Um, but yeah, I want a more human interaction, more, yeah, more, more bars, more sports events, whatever, and actually give people the opportunity to, um, to make their own assumptions rather than straight up. Hi, I'm trans. Like it's how it felt at times. Yeah. Do does does she say that everywhere she goes? Pretty much, like it really felt like they went, when went they went to that bar where there's like fuck Joe Biden and uh, you know oh, Trump yeah. and all sort of stuff. I, I didn't and understand very early the, the politics side where they were like, oh, we were in a picture with the senator who d- came out and said, oh, that was the basketball game. Yeah, I, I, I didn't understand that. I was like American politics. I have no idea what you're talking about. Sure, yeah, that was more or less just they met they met a senator at a basketball game and we had a good chat. Um, and and mentioned to the senator that um, Harper was a, a trans woman, and then later, when the next day, when they were driving or whatever, Harper showed Will a, a news thing about how he was more or less uh, creating bills and petitioning against um, trans rights. So he was very very transphobic. Yeah. Sure. Um, that was more or less the, the conversation, and Will was like, "I should have said something." She's like, "How could you have known?" <laughs> like. Mm. Uh, if you don't know, you don't know. Gotcha. Yeah, I didn't really get it. I was like, oh, okay. No, that's fair. I understand that. Because they were like, oh, you're in a picture that you didn't know you were in or something or other. I was like, what? Mm. Yeah, they just moved on. Well, that's what, like, yeah. 
because she was bringing up the perspective of of like you know Will Ferrell, a a list star. Like people ask for photos all the time, and if you say no, you're a dick. Especially especially other people of a higher status, like senators. Um, and you know you don't want to be pictured like I wouldn't take a photo with a transphobic person. Like I wouldn't want to be seen as friends with that person. But if I'm a celebrity and they're a celebrity or they're a you know high status person, it's there's an obligation there, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah, I wish it was longer. I, I wish it was a series. Maybe six episodes, 40 minutes each, uh, I think would have really helped it. Um, but, you know, here we are. It's a four for me. Okay. Yeah. Look, it's a, it's a three for me. Like, yeah. I enjoyed it. It was interesting. It's just, I don't know, it leaves me with more questions than what I came in with it. Yeah. Yeah. Although I mm. probably, I probably won't go and seek those answers. I'll probably stay oblivious until the next time we watch something. Yeah, yeah. And then ask me. Yeah. That's fine. I'll be with yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. So it was interesting. Oh. Hmm. Well then, next week we have yes. Wolves, which is the newest, uh, who is it? Brad Pitt and... Clooney. Uh, Clooney in yeah. the newest film. I think it's Apple TV film. I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. And then we've got a Netflix special, which is It's What's Inside. And then Lawson is talking about movie of the year, apparently, which is called The Substance. Yeah, people are saying it's pretty fucking incredible. Yeah. I don't watch it yet, but I, don't, I want to look no at the idea. budget of Wolves. Coming in blind with all of these ones. So I have no idea what's what's going to be happening. Yeah, I think Wolf's going to be pretty generic, but... Probably. Although and, Apple TV uh, have done pretty well. Like Napoleon, um, mm. Blackbird. Uh, what's it? Yeah. Oh, Blackbird is incredible. Uh, what was the other one? Napoleon. Um, you said that twice. Did I? No. Well, they released it twice. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Blink twice, supposedly, was no. Ted Lasso. Oh, just... oh Ted Lasso is great. 100%. Uh, season four is coming. And what's the news? There's a news, news reader. Oh, Kills show. the Flower Moon was Apple TV. Yeah. News reader show. What? Yeah, which has got like uh, Reese Witherspoon and. And Reese uh, Without a Spoon. Yeah. And Jennifer Aniston, good morning, something. Good morning. No idea. He's good morning, something. Vietnam. That was a good film, though. <laughs> um, I don't know. One of those. One of those ones. No idea. But yeah, should be interesting. Did you find what the budget was? It says fifty million, but there's no way with fifty million. Fifty million would barely pay for them, you know. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. know. I couldn't find it. Who knows? I give up pretty quick. Yeah, anyway, fair. let's wrap this baby up. Yep. You know what to do. You listen on Spotify, give us a five star rating. You listen on YouTube. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and tell your friends. Tell your friends. Have a great day, everybody. Boys. Love you. See you guys next time. Boys.